Welcome to the One Community Local Leaders Podcast, and I'm Matt Scarborough, cyclist and lawyer from Bicycle Accident Law. And I'm Leo Brasino, special education um, teacher and swim coach. In our podcast, we'll be featuring leaders throughout the area, and we want to know what makes them tick. So do us a favor, subscribe, listen, share, and we're going to grow this thing together. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Matt Scarborough from the One Community Local Leaders podcast presented by Bicycle Accident Law. And we have the great pleasure of having Brian Hatlalid, if I said that correctly, (laughs) on our podcast. Um, I'm just getting to know uh, Brian, but he has been a physical therapist for a long time, got his doctorate, which not many physical therapists have their doctorate. Uh, in 2003, has been practicing as a physical therapist for uh, about 20 years or more. Yeah, right on you. And then uh, opened up his own practice in the Palm Harbor area in March of 2023. And he is connected to this local endurance world that we have. Friends, swims with Brooke Bennett, who's been a friend and been on the podcast. And so we're delighted to have him. So thank you, Brian. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, so tell us a little bit how you kind of started, number one, in the endurance sports world. Well, as, as a, a high school swimmer, I was always kind of geared towards the endurance events, the 200 fly, the 400 IM, and that's where my coach kind of found my best fit for swimming, and it just kind of went on from there. I was, I was really lucky to have some success in high school and then recruited over to Arizona State where, you know, college division one swimming, there's some pretty big guys out there and I'm not the biggest guy so I found my niche if I was fit and 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 able to swim a certain speed for as long as possible that I could still be competitive and and chase people down over the 200 fly or the 400 IM whereas everybody else is big and strong and they can go out quite a bit faster than me so I was lucky to kind of have some coaches that understood my biology and that I'm not the the 6'4 200 pound guy (laughs) right Right. So yeah, it was it was I was very lucky to have done it and swimming's opened up a lot of doors, you know, from from coaching and and having some really successful mentors for me, kinda guiding me through kinda my swimming competitive goals and then I've always wanted to be a physical therapist and I had a college coach that was very supportive of that. So that was really lucky for me. And then where did you get your physical therapy? Uh, it was out in Mesa, Arizona. So I, I swam for Arizona State, graduated in 2000, and then uh, a physical therapy program, the Arizona School of Health Science, it's now known as A.T. Still University. Um, it's a division of this uh, Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, which is based in Missouri. Okay. Um, so I graduated there in 2003. Wonderful. Yeah. And then where did you practice for... I guess a period of time before coming to Florida. Uh, so I was really lucky. I I met uh, this gentleman named Brett Fisher who uh, owned uh, Brett Fisher uh, Fisher Sports Institute in in Phoenix, and I worked for him for a long time. And then I uh, worked for a surgical hospital. But he kind of shaped my young physical therapy mind. Uh, PT school is fantastic for preparing you to pass the boards and you know give you the, the base knowledge of what anatomy and biology and, and recovery and all of that is so important for the, the physical therapy world. But then Brett kind of shaped my vision on physical therapy and biomechanics and kind of the functional evaluative side of, of physical therapy that you learn more clinically than you do maybe in, in the, the school curriculum. I think so he really expanded okay for me and then when did you come to Florida I moved to Florida uh, right during COVID uh, the, the world turned upside down and sure. uh, we made a decision as a family to move uh, in October of 2020 so really really when everything was uh, COVID had changed everything I've got uh, my sister and her husband have two uh, kids that are the same age as my son uh, so we moved here to kind of raise our family all together and my parents had just retired here in, in Palm Harbor so um, we decided it was a good move to, to kind of move to Florida and, and that was kind of the ripping off the band-aid of, of right. comfort of Arizona. This is what kind of has driven me to open my own practice was that move. And how do you use swimming I guess on a daily or weekly basis? 
<laughs> for athletic reasons and for also mental reasons. It, it, it's it's swimming has always been kind of the place that has given me either confidence or or comfort or fitness. All of those things have come kind of from the water. If if you got a bad day, go and swim. Easy or hard doesn't matter, but the water kind of makes you right. And my son, for whatever reason, either my interest in it or his own interest in it. But as a little boy, he was always. Daddy, what are the names of the sharks, the whales, the stuff, right? The, 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 the ocean life. And so we decided what, what better place to raise a kid that's super involved and invested in the ocean than four miles from the ocean, right? So we can bike, bike to the, the, the ocean every day. So, um, but it's, it's always been a place for me to, to have my fitness. It's, it's given me friends. It's given me some coaches that have been instrumental in kind of guiding my hard work, motivation, dedication, some of the positivity, you know. I, I was really lucky to be exposed to some, some great people. And I still try and swim a few times a week with some really, like you mentioned, Brooke, uh, and some of the other people um, that are just really positive, healthy, kind, giving people in the swim world. Yeah, where are you doing your local swims? Um, with the Clearwater Masters uh, at the Long Center. Um, I, When I moved here, I had my family, and I was very lucky to have that. But as we all know, we need a social network probably outside of our family, right? Those are the people that love us the most, but we need our own outlets and our own interests. And that's where I fell back on, on swimming. I said, what better do I know? What, what do I know the best in my life? And that's swimming. So I... I did the Google search and where's a local master's team and I, I emailed the coach there uh, and Matt responded right away and he said, these are the groups we have. Um, somebody, you'll fit in somewhere because he didn't know who I was and right. he didn't know my background and he said, you can swim at, at whatever level, whatever speed and we've got somebody that will match up well with you and it sounded awesome so I went and, and it's been kind of my social network uh, since moving here because again, moving during COVID, you can't meet people maybe in the traditional way. So we went and we were starting at opposite ends of the pool and we had to register that we were gonna show up to practice and all of these weird things that were happening during the COVID shutdown. So, right. but now we're all back to normal and it, it's great to have this kind of show, social network that I had very established in Arizona, but I didn't here in Florida. That's great. So, and now I've met people like Leo and then it trickles down to people like yourself and, and I'm just, again, swimming has done wonderful things for me. Okay. Well, I know some of the listeners are kind of like me. You know, they may be cyclists who have an interest in, hey, maybe one day I want to do a triathlon. But most, like me, a lot of cyclists are like, man, the water. Even though I grew up in Florida, I love the water. But the idea of, like, going for a mile swim is like, are you going to be kidding me? How am I going to do that? So right. how do you recommend for people like me? How do we get started in swimming? Well, I think uh, swimming, again, is anytime you do something at the elite level, it's a skill. And, but swimming, the, in, the, the insertional point of swimming is a skill. You, you can get a kid and they can grow up and they can all of a sudden they're running, right? There's part one of the triathlon. And then every kid, it's like, well, you got to learn to ride a bike because that's how you get around in the community in your neighborhood and off to school. So that's another skill that you learn. But not every kid learns the skill of swimming. So it's something that you have to kind of be taught and that's that's great you go and you find a coach and and you you develop your skill uh for for swimming and just the comfort of the water and not fighting the water because uh, uh amateur swimmer all the way up to olympian you fight the water and nobody's as strong as, as the ocean waves so you have to be comfortable and you have to learn to relax and 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 slowly develop your confidence in the water and doing that in the pool is probably the smart place to be because the environment's quite a bit more controllable there right so i was excited to hear hear about your pt practice your physical Thank therapy you. practice and then when did you start it uh in march of 2023 so i was uh i moved here i got a kind of traditionally employed uh job at a, a really big surgical practice down in st pete uh, I was really lucky to, again, meet some people that were really, really good at what they do and, and supported me being, you know, kind of a new Floridian. Um, but I've always wanted to do a bit more and, and, 
help the people that are in front of me as best I can. And in a really busy practice, I think I was successful. I helped a lot of people. The practice was wonderful. Um, but being double booked all day, every day, it makes it hard to educate you on your injury, right? right? And I have to talk to you about your knee, your back, whatever, and then this person over here, they deserve my attention as well. And that was always kind of a thing that I wanted to be better at. I'm, I'm a huge believer in education and spending time with the person in front of me. And if there's two people in front of me, you both deserve equal time. And that's really difficult to do well if you want to be a little bit hopefully above and beyond I guess so I try and talk to everybody about hydration nutrition sleep movement exercise the mental component of recovery and I found out that being in a, a private one-on-one -on -one setting is a little more conducive to, to that so I really want to be able to just say rather than help 100 people a week I would rather help 30 people a week but do an outstanding job of it and then they have access to my cell phone or email or they can text me and say hey we did this yesterday this is how I feel today and if we have a, a smaller practice where I have 20 or 30 people that I'm responsible to that's certainly a model that works but if I've got 100 people I'm responsible to that makes that quite a bit more challenging because have 100 people reach out to you on a Wednesday night is probably not conductive to being a good dad to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't work for anybody. Right. Your previous practice, was that more insurance based? Or? It was, yeah, it was, it was insurance based traditional kind of model. And, right. and those models do a wonderful job for the people that are in that system. And, and it, it really works. And I'm confident that that is a great part of the medical healthcare practice. I wanted to position myself a little bit outside of the insurance world. So I'm a cash-based physical therapist, which means that insurance doesn't dictate our relationship. You can come to me and say, I want to come to you once a week. I want to come to you once a month. I want to just talk to you about anything. And we, and we can do that. Um, so it allows me to further give you what I think it is that exactly you need. Or you can come to me and say, this is what I think I need. Because insurance will say, like, you come to me and like, I, I, I can't play tennis or I can't throw a baseball. And insurance isn't always that concerned with, can you throw a baseball? Yeah. But it's important to you. So why shouldn't that be allowed? And, I, and, and, and cash allows us to do that. So it's a little different model, but, but one that I think really serves the, the communities well because we can do exactly what people need and what people want. A little bit differently and, and education we can educate people differently because ultimately the goal of mine is I don't I don't want you in my clinic I want you living your life I want you with your family with your sports with your with your friends and you need the tools to manage your life and manage your health and wellness on your own so right. if I can give you those tools then go off and, and be the person you want to be and not be reliant on your health care provider that's a wonderful goal Thank you. I, I'm, I'm excited. It's, it's slowly growing. I can see it starting to work and, and just, just the exposure of that model that people have insurance and they want to use that, but sometimes they don't understand the limitations that the insurance world puts on them. And, some, and that's okay. But some people have a different goal for their fitness and their wellness and their recoveries. And the people that want to control that a little bit more cash a cash-based practice allows them to do that. And so where is it located? Right in the middle of Palm Harbor. We're on uh, Highway 19 uh, and Alderman. We're uh, currently, I say we, it's because I'm, I'm pairing up with my sister, Erica Gianella. She's a, a mental health provider. Uh, and we're combining our services into kind of a, a, a wellness hub into Palm Harbor. Um, so we're looking to hopefully move into a, a little bit bigger setting so we can serve people a little bit differently and it's anchored physical therapy yes I am anchored physical therapy my sister's anchored counseling and wellness and we want to combine ourselves into kind of an anchored wellness so we want to be kind of a, a wellness provider for our little corner of, of Palm Harbor Dunedin Ozona the clear water kind of blend and and just do a good job for the the small community right there I have never heard of a physical therapist combining with a 
basically a mental therapist, right? Um, is that unique? Is that I, I've never heard of it before. Have you right. seen that? Um, it's it's not a model I have have seen. Um, I do think the wellness world is is currently at this I don't know kind of inflection point of there's so much available really good knowledge of how to be healthy, how to be mentally healthy, how to be physically healthy. Um, and it just makes sense, right? I mean, it, getting a business partner that's also your sister, who who do you trust more than, than your family, right? Um, it's a perfect fit. Uh, when I was in Arizona, she was always here. And we would talk about this, man, how, how great would that be to serve a person kind of in the, the holist, truly holistic way? Because mm-hmm. the medical providers, we always talk about holistics of diet, nutrition, exercise, movement, but for some reason, mental health is always over here, right? And and we've always kind of wanted to bring it together, and it's it's it can be the missing piece. You can't have a healthy body without the mind. You certainly can't have a healthy bo- mind without your body being moving and, and doing what you want it to do. So it, it's a natural kind of blend, I feel like, and and so we're lucky to have that opportunity to kind of move forward and and, and push our services together. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of this saying that was big back in the day. I'm so old now. Back in the 80s when I was in college, it was <laughs> mind, body, and spirit. That was kind of the the catchphrase for trying right. to take care of those three buckets. Yeah. But it seems like you're, you know, you're going to be able to do that with your practice with your sister. That's absolutely the goal. I think it's always been said, but I don't know, find a medical doctor out here that also employs, a, like in their practice, a mental health provider, a licensed provider, right? They always say, oh, I've got this referral partner. So they, they refer them in that direction, um, which is great. That model also works. But my sister and I, we've been really co- lucky to co-treat some some patients. I've got some patients that I referred to her. She had a patient that she referred to me. Um, we've done some things in the room at the same time for the same patient. Um, and it's kind of been a really interesting thing it's not a direction I expected my physical therapy practice to go at the beginning of it all I thought we would have a, a back and forth very collaborative relationship but we ended up treating this gentleman at the same time and it was really powerful and I think it worked for him mm-hmm. yeah I could see the power in like literally going to see you as a physical therapist and you know, all of us, I know Leo knows this, when you start out in the physical therapy world after any injury, I had back surgery years ago, it's a scary thing. And your body is, it hurts to do it. Right. And then to be able to talk about that with somebody and the ramifications of that afterwards mm-hmm. as a therapist, that's, it can be incredibly healing, all of it. Absolutely, and it, what you said, like a back surgery, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Whether it was, you know, you chose that path. And so that's a one side of the psychological thing is you you woke up that morning and you said, all right, I will have back surgery today. And, and it's a, a thing that you knew was coming. And, and the psychological healing from that is is in one direction. Right. Some people, unfortunately, they wake up this morning, they're driving to work and they're in a car accident. And then they have surgery. And then they end up in front of me. So And that's when they need me. And yeah, yeah, right. true. Um, the, the, we all start to blend together, right? right. So. But those two people arrived in front of me very differently. You chose to be in front of me. This other person did not. So your psychology and their psychology are are vastly different. Whilst you're scared, they're scared. You're in pain, they're in pain. You were in more control of your outcome than they initially were. And both of you deserve to kind of hash through that psychological frustration in different ways and having somebody to talk to it's really valuable. I tell all of my patients at some point, I will be more psychologist than physical therapist for you. Because at some point you're going to come in this room and say, I'm frustrated. I'm still in pain. Why isn't this going faster or smoother? Or why am I not in a different place? And then we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about, okay, I get it. You know, you you deserve to have these frustrations but we also have to kind of trust the process and understand that every day is just a bit better. We're not trying to heal your back today. We get a little bit better. Every day is just a bit better. And then having somebody with the skills that are past mine. I'm, I'm good at that talk to a certain point. But at some point, we all need somebody like my sister. with a, with a That's their world and that's their focus. 
Um, so for me to be able to say, I get it, let's get you through this little little bit here. Okay. Now come over here and talk to my sister literally on the other side of this wall and and she can kind of talk through that a little bit differently with you and give you some different tools or uh, techniques to wrap your head around this this life-changing event a little bit differently. That's great. I'm glad so many people, including men like myself, are open to you know therapy. I think it's a wonderful thing, just like having a physical therapist or having a, a strength coach or anybody else help, helping you out. There's going to be right. times when you need it. I think so. I mean, I mean, the best athletes in the world, Michael Phelps had a coach. Michael Phelps had a psychologist, sports psychologist. He also had a mental health coach that is well documented for his, uh, you know, bouts of depression. So it should be accepted. It should be encouraged even for, for you to reach out and say, I've got a family practice doctor. I've got an orthopedic surgeon. I've got a physical therapist. I've got a person that helps me with my mental health. All of those things put each of us as individuals, as family members, as people in the community, to be better prepared to serve the ones either professionally or personally. We all have families and friends that we serve. We have the community we serve. And the more boxes we checked on our own health, the better we are prepared to help the people important to us. Yeah, I think people need to remember, you're, you can bring the best to your family if you take care of yourself. It, it's it's bound out by the research every time. The better the individual, the better we are in service to others. Yeah. yeah every time. So this isn't a controversial topic. The next one I'm going to talk to you about is a little bit controversial, I would say. But you mentioned you talk to people about sleep. What do you recommend? Um, it's sleep. It, it's sleep is like I'll, I'll jokingly say sleep is the performance enhancing drug that you'll never get knocked for on a drug test. It is it is the sing, one of the single most important things that you can do for physical health, for mental health, for energy levels, for everything is a sleep routine that is consistent and and longer than probably most people will care to admit that they they need, right? People will say all the time they're proud of themselves. I can I can burn the candle. I can be successful on 5 hours of sleep. And I would challenge them on that, right? You can be successful, but are you really thriving? Are you really doing what is optimal for your life? And and I want to be optimal. I don't want to just kind of float by and, and be marginally successful. I want to do a great job. And that probably takes eight hours of sleep a night. Yeah. Um, and we need to be consistent with that. So there's sleep hygiene we talk about and blue lights and screens and... and caffeine later in the day or alcohol with dinner it's all of these can be managed well I, I'm not you know a, a authoritarian on you can't drink caffeine past noon and you can't have a glass of wine with dinner those are all things that are acceptable but we need to know what that does to our sleep and, and educate yourself on the consequences of those decisions but having just a good well-rounded sleep pattern is essential yeah I, and again I think that's something you know, as men, I've knocked down my drinking a lot and my sleep has improved mm -hmm. dramatically. Right. And then I had a sleep study and I did not want to get a CPAP. I hated it. I was right. the, the thought of me having to do that was honestly grotesque. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I did it and now I sleep seven, eight hours a night pretty damn well. And it's made a remarkable difference in just my mental capabilities. So, you know, everybody get over your stigma. Go get a right. CPAP machine if you need right. it. You know, it's a great thing. Right. I mean, you're 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 cutting the the knife blade just a bit better. Like you're already healthy, successful, but it's like you had a few more percent that you could get, and right. so go and get it. Right. It, go yeah. be healthy. It's no big deal. Here's right. the here's the controversial one. I think for whatever reason, nutrition. Everybody's like, oh, I'm either a carnivore, I'm a vegan, <laughs> or I'm paleo, or you know, I don't know why everybody has those wars so much. Uh -huh. But what do you what do you recommend for nutrition? Um, I I think there's a few things in nutrition that are kind of unequivocally agreed upon, sure. and that is eat as much real food as possible. So the less processed food, the better, right? Um, so if you're raw vegan all the way up to full carnivore, I can I can find some some agreement with all of those people, right? right. Um, but nobody goes out and says, eat a bunch of sugar and eat as many foods in a box as you can. 
So that is something that I think everybody can agree on across the dietary spectrum of eat fruit, eat vegetable, eat protein that comes and looks like it's still protein, right? Right. Um, And I think those are the most important boxes to check. And then when you talk about somebody who's got athletic goals or somebody that's got weight loss goals, then you can start to fine tune some of those levers a bit more of protein and and vegetable and all of the different levers that we have to pull. But just avoidance of sugar is probably the single best dietary choice you can make. So you started your business in March of 2023. Mm -hmm. Uh, Looks like your sister's joining you. Yeah, she was a little bit ahead of me in that process. She she opened her private practice about a year ago. Okay. So, yeah. So, I started my business when I had a two-year-old. I see that you have a young family as well. What is that? You know, I have my own perspective. What is um, that like? It's, it's awesome and challenging, and he's actually a huge supporter of the process. He's, he's 10 now. He's, he was 10, I guess he was 9 when we started uh, our own practice, but he's been really encouraging and and in ways that I didn't necessarily expect well maybe I should have as a, as, a, as a dad but I would say when I was employed by the surgical group I would have to leave at 6 30 a.m my first 6 15 my first patient was at seven um, and and I didn't have control of my schedule right because I was employed they said you'd be here at this time you leave at this time and that's just the rules right that's I was an employed uh, physical therapist. And then I opened my own and now I'm in control of, can I be at the bus stop for him at 8.15 and then go and take a patient? And can I be at the bus stop when he gets off school at 3.30? And can I get him to swimming practice? And can I be really involved with homework and and school? And that has been a reward that I had hoped for. And it's it's really become part of my reality is as I've gotten busier, personally trying to grow the thing and and market myself and meet people in the community like yourself and Leo and some of the others that I've been lucky to meet. So I'm busier in that direction, but I've gained time with him, which was a, a blessing and a goal, and I wasn't sure if it would work, but it, it really did, and it's incredible. Yeah, I'm real proud to say that I never missed a single event that my daughter had, mm-hmm. and now she lives in New York City. So, but I was lucky enough to do that, having my own business for the last 23 years. So, it's one of it's one of the incredible, right. I think, benefits of having your own place. I I, I couldn't agree it more. It's 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 perfect. I'm in control of my destiny. I I get to spend time with the people that are valuable to me, but still do the thing professionally that's also valuable to me because I don't want to give that. It's I'm so proud of working with patients and influencing their directions of, of achieving their goals. But, but also, you know, number one is still right over here in the corner, right? He's, right. he's, he's the guy that I really want to spend time with. That's wonderful. So, you know, the podcast is called one community local leaders podcast. Yeah. And I could, I really appreciate you being on. I could, I could tell that you have a lot of tenacity. You're a very smart guy, very thorough, like, and this is a tough question when I ask people, to reflect on it, but you know, what qualities do you think you bring to the table that might kind of influence all of us, whether it be opening up our own business, being starting a new fitness journey? What do you, what do you think you bring to the table every day, Brian? Um, I, I hope that I am an empathetic listener and a good educator. I think when I try and describe myself somebody's like oh you're a physical therapist what is it that you do right and of course you got to check the box of you know the body you know the biology you know the mechanics of injury or surgery like that's just the hall that is the requirement of being a physical therapist the bonus on top of that is you got to be able to connect with somebody and you got to be able to empathize with what they're going through and and this the fear they have or the concerns they have and and i think if I describe myself to somebody, I often say I'm, I'm, I'm an educator. I educate you on how to be successful, how to help your own body get through this process. Um, I think physical therapists are always very proud of, of I, I healed your back. You said you had back surgery and the physical therapist will say, I healed that guy's back and now he's out on the bike and he's, he's a successful attorney again. And I push back a little bit on that and I say, I've never healed anyone. I've healed one person in my life and that's myself. I am only capable of healing myself. 
for you, I am capable of giving you tools for your body to create the right environment for it to heal itself. And that's what we're all really good at. And I think we need to remind ourselves that we can only heal ourselves. And getting the guidance of what tools help that, what, what physical environment, what mental environment, what sleep environment, that's where I can influence you on how to create the right environment for your body to do its job, right? So I, I always tell people I never healed at any of my patients, but I've given them tools to be successful. Awesome. And if we can do that, then we're doing a good job. That's great. But well, we need more empathetic people in this world. That's for sure. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we do. How do, how do people find you uh, personally uh, or on social media? And right. how do people find your business? Um, so I'm Anchored Physical Therapy. Um, uh, I am working on growing that platform. But uh, um, on Google, I've got an a Instagram page called uh, Anchor the Body. So it's kind of the slogan we've tried to come up with. My sister is Anchor the Mind. Wow. Uh, I am Anchor the Body. Um, and we think that that's a really good way to kind of um, show people like you can have the weight of yourself controlling your mind, the, the weight of yourself controlling your body. And, and it's a, a grounding kind of uh, force. Um, I'm on Facebook for Anchored Physical Therapy. Um, and uh in, in complete honesty, I need to do better at the socials. I'm, I'm not necessarily a fan of, of screens and computers and, and doing the thing on Facebook and Instagram, uh, but I realize that that's important. So I, that's why I've tried to, to meet people like yourself and Leo and some of the other, like Brooke, um, just the grassroots following of, of if I can do a good job with you and your back, then you would go and tell your your friends and say hey this guy's helped me and so that's really what I want to do is just influence people and if it grows slowly that's okay because I, I I want to be able to do a good job for the, the people that are in front of me well that's a beautiful message and um, on behalf of Leo and I we really appreciate you being here thank you so much it's it's uh, it's been incredible to, to do one of these and I've honestly I've never done one before but I've always kind of been interested in the platform of, of podcasting and how you can reach people in a different way and educate people in a different way. So um, that's that's what I really want to be about is education. We'll have you and your sister back on once it gets going. That would be wonderful to talk to both of you, I think. That would be really exciting. We really hope that 2024 is kind of the year where we kind of break out and, and get uh, a bit of exposure and, and we can start to collaborate and really help some people and, and encourage people to, to, to be healthy and, and go live your life and don't be frustrated by uh, bits of nicks and nags on your on your body, or little frustrations, and, and or even big frustrations, right? Everything's overcomable with a bit of work. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Matt.